Welcome to my course, Game Development Basics, Week 2, Lesson 10, Bug Squash Finishing Touches. In this lesson, we're going to finish our game by creating a lose condition when the tower reaches zero health, and we'll create reset and quit options in a game over screen, so the player can either try again or quit the game. Let's start by creating that lose condition. I'm here in the player tower class, and currently we have a take damage that allows our tower health to be decreased every time the player takes damage. And when the tower health reaches zero, we're currently just printing a string that shows that the health is zero or below zero. We actually wanna change this to have some game over functionality. And if you remember, our game mode is what should control the rules of the game. So let's set up the game over function in the game mode class. And for this, I want to create a new custom event. And you can call this game over or stop game, whatever works best for you that you're going to remember what it does. And the first thing we want to do is we want to pause the game. So we can drag off here and we can set game paused. And there's already a function there. And there's just a Boolean. Do we want to pause the game or unpause the game? The next thing we want to do is stop spawning new bugs into the game. So let's say clear timer by function name. And our function was spawn bug. So if you remember, this timer is looping, which means it's just gonna to continue to loop through until we tell it to stop. And this clear timer by function name will stop that loop. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna destroy all of the bugs that are currently in the game. And we have a bugs array that should have all of the bugs currently spawned into the game. We can drag off of this array and type four and get a for each loop. And we can drag off of this array element. This is gonna give us a reference to the object in the array that we're currently at for that index. Let's type destroy. And how this is gonna work is it's gonna take each bug in the array that we set when we're spawning the bugs, and it's going to destroy every one of them, one at a time. And then the completion of this loop will be the completed pin. The next thing I want to do is I want to remove the HUD from the player's screen. So we can say get all widgets of class. Let's remember to plug this into completed HUD. And then from here, if we drag off and type parent, we should see remove from parent and we can plug this in. And what this will do is we'll get all of our HUD widgets and it's gonna remove them from the player's screen. So similar to how we destroy an actor, we remove from parent a widget. And I wanna create a new widget that shows a game over screen. So let's create that. We'll go back to our UI folder. We'll create a new widget, user widget. Let's call this one WP WBP game over. Let's open this. We we'll create another canvas panel. And then on this, for now, let's just put some text. We'll anchor that text right to the center. Zero and zero. Point five. Let's go up just a little bit. Let's type game over. We'll make it pretty big. Let's center it and do size to content. And now we have a widget that'll show game over. Let's compile and save this. And we'll go back to our game mode. And let's create a widget game over and add to viewport. Let's go back to our player tower. And now we want to call this. So again, 
Let's cast to game mode. Get game mode. So we're going to get our game mode. We're going to cast it to BB game mode, which gives us access to game over. Let's compile and see what happens. The bugs are going to spawn, and now when we reach zero health, we should get that game over screen. Perfect. But from here, the player doesn't have any way to interact with the game if they want to reset. All they can do is quit. And even then, they can only quit by manually closing the program. So let's set up some functionality that gives the player access to be able to restart or quit the program from this screen. And here I have some errors in my message log. And this is saying that we attempted to access this bug but we couldn't find it. And if we click here, it'll show us where it was happening. So it's in our array of bugs. And the reason we're getting this is because we're adding a bug to the array, but then when the bug is destroyed, we're not removing it from the array. There's a couple ways we can clear this up. The first way is we can add an is valid node here. And this is going to check that the bug in our array is valid. And then only if it's valid, we can destroy it. And this is one way to do it. The other way is that when we destroy a bug, we can remove it from the array. And here in the destroy, we already have a reference to our game mode. So we can access the bugs array and do remove item. And here it would be self. And this would remove the bug that we're destroying from the array and then destroying the bug. So two different ways to do it. It really just depends on what functionality you would like for your game. I would say this way is probably a little bit more stable and the reason is once a bug is destroyed, we really don't need to have access to it anymore because we're only using this array to destroy the bugs at game over. So I personally like this implementation, but we can also add the other one just for good measure to make sure that we're not going to get any bugs. And I just want to clean this up a little bit. I'm going to make this into a function called destroy bugs. And that makes it just a little bit easier to read. Let's go back to our game over screen and we're going to create a couple more elements that the player can use to interact with a game at game over. If we look here, we can see that there's a button. Let's drag one of those in and let's anchor it to the center 0.5 on the X alignment. And let's put it right in the center of the screen. Now, a button has a few events that are automatically linked to it when we add one. On clicked, on pressed, on released, on hovered, on unhovered. And we can use the on clicked event to fire some functionality to either reset or quit our game. Let's add some text to the button. And we can see here that a button can have a child of text. And let's make this text say, try again. We'll go back to our button. We'll say size to content, and then let's create an on clicked event. And on clicked, we just want to reset the level. So let's do open level by name. We know our level name was bug map. Careful if you named it something different, this won't work unless this string matches exactly to the name of your level. Let's compile. And we're going to let the bugs get us and then we'll try to reset and start a new game. And we can see that it works, but here now I don't have access to my cursor. So in our game mode, 
when we're doing all of this end game, let's add one more thing to the end here. We're going to type set show mouse cursor. And in order to get this, you may actually have to deselect this context sensitive, put this in here, and this is going to set a Boolean on whether the player can see the mouse cursor or not. Let's click it on. And this needs one other input, which we can hover over and see it's a player controller. So let's say get player controller. And now when we lose, we have access to the mouse. We can select try again, and then we can try again. Let's go back to our game over and we can just duplicate this button. And this is gonna be our quit button. So let's change the name to button quit so we know which one's which. Let's change the text here to quit game. And with our button, let's create an on clicked event. And for this, there's a handy node that's just called quit game. And now we can hit this and it will just close the game out for the player. And that's it. We now have a game over screen that the player can select to either retry the level or quit the game. And right now we have a functioning game and it may not be the most exquisite game, but we've made it from scratch and we've fulfilled all the requirements of the game. So far we've been using mostly primitive assets in our game. And our levels aren't exactly looking great. They're mostly just a ground and we're spawning some primitive actors into the game. In week three, we're gonna talk about adding assets to our game, either custom assets or ones you purchase from another place. So with the next project, our games are gonna start looking a lot better, a lot more put together, and we're gonna to continue to build on the knowledge that we've learned in weeks one and two.